That's Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. Many of you older folks who are watching this have probably had uh, experience with tent meetings through the years where you'd go and have a tent revival. You'd see a man stake up a tent down on the corner and you'd watch him go there and he'd get up there and he'd preach. And the Bible said the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel is the way to uh, the recognition that Jesus Christ did come and die on the cross for us. But uh, it's foolishness to the world. It's not foolishness to the saved man, it's foolishness to the lost man. On the other hand, what the lost man is doing is foolishness to the saved man. All right, the opening of the words of Leviticus, in the book of Leviticus, now remember we're in there today, and we're studying in Leviticus and the revealing of what is necessary when the acquaintance to the book of Exodus. Okay. The book of Exodus, as we read it, we find out at the end of it, it didn't draw a conclusion. It had to pass on in to the book of Leviticus to get that conclusion. Now, uh, if you were in a, a court setting and you started out on a great case in a court setting, the lawyer is going to set the bounds. And that's what Exodus was doing. Uh, Genesis and Exodus, they had, the children of Israel had come through uh, a great place. And they were, the bounds had to be set for them to be able to live in, to walk in, and the necessities. Now, you know, when the, when the laws were given, uh, the holy laws and the physical laws were given in the book of Leviticus, they were given for more than one reason. They were given for the reason of holiness, but they were also given for the reason of cleanliness. They were also given uh, ways and means uh, of laws of how to live in the household, how a man should live with his wife, how a wife should live with a man, how they should raise the children, what the children should do, how the children should be raised, and all of those things and how they would know that there was a God called Jehovah, and this God was the one that they were supposed to commune with. And uh, God chose a person, his name was Moses. And Moses was the one that was to visit one-on-one -on -one with Jehovah, God, and bring the message back and pass it on to the people. And he spoke unto him, in the tent meeting, God spoke unto Moses, you remember, on the mountain. But he also spoke to him in the tent. Now you remember, the great tabernacle was a tent. And that tent was uh, where they met, where Moses met the Lord. And I, 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 I uh, dubbed this one the greatest tent meeting there ever was was when Moses met God in the tent and had this great tent meeting. Without such an acquaintance, uh, uh, there would not have been communication with God. Uh, God, uh, he made this tabernacle, this tent, and he gave it to the people. And reacquainted himself with the people. What was lost in the garden was the acquaintance of man and God together. Adam and God walking in the garden early in the morning, communing. What is an acquaintance? Two people get together, meet each other, and they, they've never met each other before, and they become acquainted. How do they get along? Well, it's like a lawyer and his uh, guy that he's defending. He didn't know him, and the guy calls him up, and he said, I understand you're a lawyer. And the lawyer says, yeah. And he said, well, I'm, I'm Brother Peter, and I got this case I need you to handle for me. And he said, yeah, okay, uh, there'll be a penalty 
to pay. And I said, what is that? And he said, well, I need $5,000 up front. And then I'll talk with you. <laughs> oh, me. Uh, uh, excuse me. But uh, uh, anyway, back into the book. So God said, I, I want to be reacquainted with you people the same way I was with Adam. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make a way of redemption. And he spoke to Moses in the tent, in this tent meeting. And if you've read Exodus, you know that as he spoke to Moses, that we have questions that come up about the conversations. Now, the book of Exodus, when it ends, it ends with the covering of a cloud by day to keep them cool and a fire by night to keep them warm. Now, a cloud by day and a fire by night. And then in the tent there was a great cloud, the cloud of righteousness of God over the uh, uh, Holy of Holies. There was a great cloud uh, there that God put there. And uh, between this covering of a cloud in, in the book of uh, Exodus and the beginning of the book of Leviticus is it deals with the first and second half. First and second half. I say to people before, do you know what this is? It's the top of this. A circle has two halves. It has a top half and a bottom half. The top half of this world is positive. The bottom half is negative. And the uh, two pieces together work. They make a circle. And they make a, everything circle around that circle. They make gravity. They make things hold together. You must have a good positive and a good negative to have a good battery. Now, God said the positive thing is, Moses, is that I'm building this, having you build this tabernacle, and I'm going to dwell there. You put uh, all these skins, these 12, 13 layers of skins, uh, well, 12 layers and an extra piece, uh, on on this tent, I'm uh, you you correct me. I, I tell you what you do. Don't don't just go by what Brother Peter says, because I, I I teach and I'm talking this morning about past study. I'm talking about something. I, I should have got in and really studied again this morning if I'm going to give facts and figures. See if there was 11 or 12 coverings over the tabernacle where the Holy of Holies was, where the, uh, the great box was that had Aaron's rod in it and those things. See if I'm right. Do some study for yourself. I could take my Bible right now, go back to it, open it up and look at it. But if I do, I'd be telling you about it. You would not be learning about it. You would be hearing about it. If you go back and find it for yourself, you'll be learning about it. So get in your Bible, go back, check Brother Peter out. Find out, was there 11? Was there 12? Was there 12 and a half curtains over that? Why were the curtains over that? Were the curtains so that the light would not come in? Absolutely not. The curtains were so the light wouldn't blind the people that was in there. Because the light that was in the Holy of Holies was God himself light, the Holy Spirit's light. And it was so bright in there that it shined so bright that it would put the eyes of man out. And a man could not stand it. So... Uh, the stone on the uh, tomb.